Hi guys, I'm here in my studio again. It's Sunday and I wanted to make a second video that starts from where uh, episode four was. So with that one, I had a drawing of a little girl with a dog, which I'll post up here so you can see it. Um, so from that drawing, I went ahead and cleaned up the uh, sketch. It was from a hand drawing and then I scanned it in and then I went ahead and put it in Photoshop and then I started um, doing some adjustments on it. And so this is where I would go to next. So this is like step two, episode five. And how would you go ahead and then start drawing over and using your tools to create a digital drawing? Uh, there'll be another episode and how I would color it in. So anyways, I'm going to switch over to my uh, screen recorder and you guys can check that out. Thanks. Hi guys, I'm now in Photoshop CC 2019. So um, I'm going to go over some of the things that I did in this illustration. Um, originally I recorded this audio and I didn't have my microphone set up. So the audio, I had to re actually record it. So I'm watching the video that I took and then I'm having to re-say everything, so hopefully I'll say it in the right order. So I opened up the file in Photoshop, and you can see my cleaned up um, sketch. Um, I've actually finished this drawing, and I fixed it, and I wanted to rework it again for time number version number three because I realized I wasn't really happy with some of the things that I'd already traced. So I'm doing this again, and so the third time works like a charm. Okay, so I'm starting to go ahead and trace the outline of the character because I like to start with the main character first. So I went ahead and I used my own brush that I created for a pencil brush because I tend to like a lot of texture on my pencil brushes. Um, and Photoshop provides you with some um, pre-made brushes in your brush settings. And there are also a bunch of wonderful brushes uh, made by Kyle um, Webster, and those brushes are phenomenal. And I do use a lot of his brushes, but then um, I took a digital illustration class and I started making my own. And there's so many resources on YouTube that can help you figure out how to make your own brushes. But the YouTube video that I watched, I'm going to go ahead and provide a link to that in the description box below. So some of the things that I wanted to change was uh, the drawing of her hand on the little girl. I wanted to articulate her fingers a little bit more because I had it more like a closed fist and I felt like it made it look like she didn't have any fingers. So I went ahead and adjusted that and fixed that. Okay, so I'm fixing her fingers right now. And then on her other hand, I wanted to kind of flush out her hand a little bit better, change the angle. Um, it looked a little awkward. Um, it also looked like she didn't have any knuckles and I needed to go back in and draw those and kind of do the finger separations as well. So all these things um, are things that after I kind of took a break from the illustration, I kind of could go back and look and see what do I really need to do to fix and adjust things. As you can see on the right hand side, I've got my brush panel like popped out so I can go back if I want to switch to a different brush. But then next to that on the right hand side is my layers panel. And I always like to work in separate layers for my drawings. Okay, so as you need to, you can go ahead and make whatever revisions you need to on your contour drawing. Also, I dropped the opacity on my original sketch just so it was ghosted out. And on the layers panel, you'll see an option at the top that says opacity and you can use it like a little slider bar and kind of reduce the opacity and how much you see of the actual drawing. And I noticed later on as I was working on this, I had issues with the sidewalk. I wasn't happy with that as well because the curved sidewalk, it just didn't look right perspective wise to me. And I felt like I needed to go back and fix it after I did the dog. So after I finished drawing the dog, which you can see that I'm working on. Um, and also this is a little side note, when you're drawing certain things where something else is covering it, try to see if you can go through and draw through it. So like, the legs are covering up, you know, part of the underside of the belly or the chest, I would go ahead and draw those and then go back and erase and make sure that the lines are connected together. So it just feels like it flows back together a little bit better. So now I'm selecting the girl and I'm putting her on a separate layer. And I basically masked her out um, from the actual original sketch that I did. So this gets a little bit wonky and complex because I'm trying to fix the sidewalk so you'll see me adjusting things and 
reworking them. And at first I tried warping it and distorting it. It still looked really awkward. And then it just came down to me having to redraw it. And then I just had to like erase it and abandon it. And so once I realized that was going to be the case, sometimes it's not always going to be a sor shortcut, easy fix. I went ahead and erased that, those sections, deleted it. And then I got a ruler, a 12 inch wooden ruler, lined it up on my Cintiq and started drawing my um, parallel lines. And then as far as my diagonals, which are your orthogonal lines, when you're drawing in perspective, I had to turn the ruler and try to figure out where my vanishing point was. And I had to do it a couple times because I just really thought it felt like it wasn't really lying down all the way. And that is a problem when you don't really pay attention to your vanishing points and your perspective. So mistake made and you learn from it. Um, because when I was doing my original sketch, it was a really quick rough sketch. And so from there, you can really work, rework things and try to figure out what what is working, what's not working. And, uh, you know, quickly I realized as I was redrawing over it, it just, it didn't make sense visually. Like the sidewalk was curved and it was like narrowing too much. It made her look really big uh, because the sidewalk, though it does vanish in the distance, it shouldn't vanish that much. So I just kept um, playing with it and reworking it until I got it to the way I was a lot more happy with it. So I definitely say as I've been taking my graduate classes in illustration, it kind of makes me really think about a little bit harder about what really are things that I have problems with. And everybody has their own things that they kind of work through as they're doing an illustration. And I have this list that I have um, pinned to my wall and I look at it and I go like, these are these five C's. You've got color, composition, concept contrast and craftsmanship so the issues that I was having kind of dealt more with craftsmanship because the perspective was off and so that's something I would go with category five number five craftsmanship so making sure you understand perspective and sometimes it's like practicing over again and thinking oh well maybe I can just adjust it but yeah as you can see it wasn't working and I just had to make make that point and decision and say hey this is not working I need to figure out another way to do this and and once I started reworking things I was like oh this is looking a lot better <laughs> it is working and you know so and at this point really I I feel like you shouldn't be really that tied down into your drawing you can especially when it's digital and that's the great thing about it you can always delete mask hide something to make it a lot easier and I apologize because I originally had every little step detailed out in this video, but it just got lost and the recording was horrible. So anyway, you can see me pulling some guidelines, some non-printing guidelines to kind of check and see where those um, horizon line and things like that would be. And so this next fix, uh, I fixed the front sidewalk. Now I need to go back and fix the back sidewalk and adjust it. And I just used a good old ruler right on top of my Cintiq and that worked pretty great. And it did take me a couple times of just redrawing the, the orthogonal lines, you know, on the sidewalk to really get that correct. So, and then I was a lot more happy with it. I mean, there's some things I would still change. Like I think I needed to change when I look at this now, even further, maybe the direction that the house is facing it's um, because it was meant for a corner view that I might go back and adjust that still. So those are things that later on I can always go back and rework it on the sketch and to kind of make it to the place I want it to be at. And this is what I would consider maybe a little bit more of a spot illustration. Just kind of showing a girl running with her dog in the neighborhood. And the uh, neighborhood I kind of thought of about was on the beach. We have these cute little beach houses on Tybee. And uh, so I was looking at those for inspiration and the palm trees and I do like that about living on the coast. So yeah, this was a fun illustration to kind of rework and you can kind of see like it's a constant adjustment and getting to the point where you realize like this could be a lot better and how can I fix these things and what are some problems that I might have before I show this to anybody else. And I'm just kind of like really working on that aspect of honing my ability to look at things because that's something that I kind of accepted, like, oh, this this has got to be the best solution, but it really isn't. There's always a way that if you look at things objectively that you can improve upon it. And a lot of times that 
I'm always made so when my professors will comment about it because they have so much experience and they're really able to like sharp on what needs to be fixed and they can look at it in like three seconds and say this needs to be fixed this needs to be fixed it takes me like sometimes right away I can see it and then sometimes it's me working on it for a day and that's a lot better than it used to be but I went ahead and put the final illustration at the end and thanks for watching